morning. Please sit down. Secretary Cesar Purisima, Mr. Jose Nunez Jr., Mr. Francisco del Rosario Jr., Mr. Simon Paterno, Officers and Employees of the Development Bank of the Philippines, Scholars under the Development Bank of the Philippines Endowment for Education Program, Fellow Workers in Government, Honored Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Magandang Baga po sa inyo lahat. 65 years ago, the Development Bank of the Philippines emerged from the darkness and horror of the Second World War with a clear mandate to provide tangible, practical, financial support to those Filipinos who needed it. A pillar, so to speak, that would provide a firm hand to people as they rose from the rubble of war. A baker whose property was destroyed might have been given a fresh start by the DBP. A farmer who had his crops ruined might have been allowed the seeds of a new beginning by the DBP. Fast forward to 2010. When we assumed office, we found the DBP as one of dozens of government institutions that had been victimized by an administration fueled by self-enrichment. Leaders who were supposed to be exemplars of integrity fell prey to a system where connections were capital and patronage was king. For example, from the investigations of the Senate's Blue Ribbon Committee and Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions and Currencies, we hear of very troubling transactions. According to Senator Sergius Menya, during the previous administration, a company with only $2 as paid up capital received a $90 million loan from the DBP. Upon further investigation, it was found that the loan was processed even when the company was yet to be named. How does that happen? How does a bank approve a loan of that magnitude to a company that is worth next to nothing? Deals of this type had become the dirty secrets of a privileged class of bank patrons who bullied their way over the hundreds of decent and competent DBP employees who wanted to do the right thing. It was a decade in which the real bosses of the DBP, the Filipino people, were shoved out of the way in favor of a privileged few. Today, on the beginning of its 65th year, the DBP has begun to close that door on that lost decade. It has begun to reclaim its honor by holding accountable those who abuse the institution. More importantly, after 19 months, the straight and narrow path has led the DBP back to its true purpose, financial support in line with the agenda of development, poverty reduction, and inclusive growth. This path back to our bosses has not been an easy one to tread. It has encountered its share of resistance, controversy, and even tragedy. I have said from the beginning that an order from above will not magically change the system. The turnaround that the DBP is now experiencing was about the initiative, hard work, and courage of so many people. The new and committed board of the DBP, a Senate and House of Representatives that stands with us in our agenda of reform, and the hundreds of employees of the DBP who now find a space where decency and integrity are lauded and not stifled. Around seven months ago, through the commitment and initiative of Congress, I was able to sign into law the GOCC Governance Act of 2011, which rationalizes the perks and bonuses that those working in these corporations may receive, among other provisions. In line with the spirit of restoring transparency in our institutions, I am told that DBP has recently adopted a new policy that seeks to protect whistleblowers and that they will be offering values formation programs for all bank officers and personnel. I hear the bank has also reactivated the office of its resident ombudsman. These measures will go a long way in safeguarding the integrity of this institution. And I thank those at DBP for their active pursuit of transparency and accountability. The noise we hear from some quarters is that such tightening of processes and such strictness in the way our institutions work is bad for business. How can it be bad for business when DBP's performance proves otherwise? In 2011, DBP registered a net income of 4.02 billion pesos, 8% higher than its target of the year of 3.73 billion. There was robust growth in deposits, loans, and investments. This despite economic uncertainty all around the globe. The DBP has reclaimed its founding mandate and is going even beyond its traditional duties. I am told that we have a number of DBP scholars present here today. This is on top of the loans you provide to micro, small, and medium enterprises, like the 20 million peso clean revolving credit line you extended 
to Santa Cruz Savings and Development Cooperative for the financing needs of micro-agricultural entrepreneurs in Northern Luzon. And the rest of what the DBP is doing today, your efforts towards infrastructure development, towards providing social services and assistance to our overseas workers, towards reclaiming your institution from the grimy hands of the crop, all of these are just a taste of what we can do if we continue this momentum. These are proof of what we have always believed in. Good governance pays dividends. It fosters confidence in our institutions, attracting more investors and establishing a system of predictable outcomes and stability. Those who fall in line, follow the rules and work hard will get to their goals. Those who break the law will be held accountable. This creates an economic environment that is less prone to risk and is more profitable, which redounds to more jobs, a more empowered consumer base, and more opportunities that make the gap between rich and poor more bridgeable. The hard work continues, and today I want to say to the employees of the DBP, as much progress as we have made in the past 19 months, all of us, from those in the boardrooms to those manning the teller's counters, must strengthen our efforts at good governance. Your jobs are especially important. On your shoulders lies the fate of the development projects for our countrymen, those in the margins, those from far-flung provinces, those who see their lives changing for the better because of the money you loan, those who are investing their future on that one small reachable dream. All of them rely on you. Always keep in mind that above and beyond the bosses in your office and in government, myself included, we are all serving a greater boss, the Filipino people. Let us strengthen our efforts to extend more relevant, practical, and direct financial assistance to individuals and institutions that do not have ready access to the private financial sector. We need to focus not just on remitting more profit, but on ensuring that growth is indeed truly inclusive and to the dregs of the old system, who might still be holding on to their ways, despite my express direct order to tread the straight path. To this Please do not test me. I can be a patient man, but my patience has its limits, especially for those who stand up as obstacles to reform. Keep this in mind, especially for the next year, which will be more challenging and more important. We will be continuing our pursuit, conviction and punishment of those who have done wrong. And we will make certain that the fruits we have picked along the path of good governance redounds in tangible ways to the benefit of the Filipino people. This bank is in the front lines of the struggle to show that integrity, honor, selflessness, and competence can and will free our country from the shackles of poverty. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Good day.